All right, right now we want to focus on the angry mob that attacked our democracy. Ultimately, the fates they now face and the decisions for that day, those are playing out in courtrooms. Jordan Fisher has been in many of those courtrooms following this Capitol riot case for over two years now. I guess, Jordan, one of the first things to start with two years in, how many people have been sentenced since the insurrection and what have been some of the most normal, you know, uh, common sentences, I guess I should ask. Yeah, Leslie, we're up to um, 300, approximately 350 defendants who've now been sentenced out of more than 950 who've been charged. That includes 192 people who have received at least some jail time. It's hard to say what the average sentence is because the, the, the charges are so disparate. A lot, mm. so many hundreds of people were, were convicted simply of misdemeanors. And then you have people convicted of, of very serious felonies, including uh, former NYPD officer Thomas Webster, who's received the longest sentence to date. That's 10 years in prison for assaulting a DC police officer on the grounds of the Capitol. Clearly, these folks weren't found on their own. There were a lot of people that helped law enforcement to round them up. How many people were actually involved in helping to identify these people in connection with the insurrection? Yeah, you, you may remember if you followed our coverage of the very first trial of Guy Refret, a uh, very dramatic part was that his own son had turned him in to the FBI. And we, we saw family members, we saw relatives, we saw former classmates. We also saw um, someone entertainingly, people who had matched on um, dating apps, turn people into the yes. FBI. But maybe the, the most notable is a group of online sleuths who call themselves sedition hunters, who have taken it upon themselves to try to identify people and provide tips to the FBI. And you see those tips playing into affidavits in hundreds of cases uh, that have gone on to be charged. I'm looking at this this link here on justice.gov of the capital breach cases and among them are some people who are listed as fugitives, which we don't talk a ton about, but there are some people that haven't been caught yet. That's right. There, there are four to five uh, defendants who are still considered fugitives, including one uh, gentleman from Northern Virginia who, who had been a fugitive mm -hmm. but just turned himself in today. Um, you know, the remaining cases that we're looking at are, um, you know, almost everybody has uh, complied with the process. And so we're getting to these more serious cases. You asked me what cases I'm following. There are three big ones I'm looking at right now. Okay. Uh, the, the second group of Oath Keepers to face seditious conspiracy, that trial began last month. Okay. Next week, Five Proud Boys defendants will begin trial also on charges of seditious conspiracy. That includes Enrique Terrio, who's on your screen right now, the former national chairman. And uh, there's an Arkansas gentleman named Richard Barnett. He, he became an early viral image of the riot when, as you see, ah, he right posed here. for a picture with his feet up on Nancy Pelosi's desk. Now, that Proud Boys case, we're expecting to take several weeks, just as this Oath Keepers one has. And, and you may recall the previous Oath Keepers trial took 10 weeks to fit. So these are not simple cases. Yeah, this could be going on into next year when we talk about marking three years after well, all of this. Speaking of that, we heard earlier this week from a judge that the DOJ has briefed them and said there could be another thousand cases still to be filed. So not even next wow. year, years to come. Years to come. All right, Jordan, we appreciate how you've been following this and keeping us updated. And again, you can watch our half hour special Democracy Divided Stories of the Capitol Riot. We produced this last year to mark one year since the Capitol Riot, and that includes interviews with Capitol staffers and officers on the front line. It's streaming live and it is local for free. Free. It's on 24 7 on the all new WUSA 9 plus apps for Roku and Amazon Fire TV. Just search WUSA 9 in the Roku or Fire TV app store.